me just put my phone on silent or it is gonna ping and then I'll be cross. Hi everyone, it's Liz. Happy New Year. I hope you've had a good first week of January. 2022 has felt like a bit of a funny one. I haven't particularly felt like I was all that productive, but it's been helpful looking back through everything that I made because actually I did make quite a lot and quite a lot of them were really intense projects that were done on a time crunch. I'm keen this year not to put myself through too much pressure and too many time crunches again. I do have a big event coming up in June which I don't really want to spill the beans on just yet but I know that I'm going to have to make quite a few big pieces for that and I'll be chipping away at them over the next six months so that I don't end up in a massive time crunch right, in, right at the end. Um, the stuff that I made for the ball in particular ended up being hand finished like honestly an hour before we actually got out of the door to go to the ball which isn't fun and is really stressful i'm keen not to repeat that so i'll be making sure that i try and plan my sewing time a bit better in the first six months of this year anyway without too much further ado let's just jump in and talk about the first thing that i made in 2022 which was the calvin wrap dress by true bias i didn't make this with the waist tie i completely eliminated that and added some poppers on the inside and at the side waist as well and that was just so that it laid a bit better a bit flatter underneath a belt so I made this with the intention of wearing it with either a skinny belt or this wide belt that I'm wearing in the video here I do prefer it with the skinny belt I just think it looks more aesthetically pleasing but I couldn't find the skinny belt for this video so I just had to kind of let it go and wear the wide one instead. I made this for my friend Faye's wedding. I didn't get it finished in time but it's still a nice to have in my wardrobe and I did wear it later in the year for my birthday celebrations. It's great for dressing up or down, wear it with high heels or wear it with chunky dr martins it looks great either way the celestial print viscose is from rainbow fabrics kilburn and in terms of mods to the pattern apart from adding poppers at the side instead of the waist tie i all i had to do was shorten it by six inches and that's just because the length of the pattern's longer than I wanted it to be, but also because I'm short. The only thing I would change about this, I think, is that I would add a popper in the neckline where the V meets because I think it's a pretty common issue with wrap dresses, but it does pop open and show a little bit more of my bra than I'm maybe comfortable with at my age now. <laughs> so <laughs> I probably wouldn't have cared 20 years ago, but maybe not now. Um, so yeah, I would add a little popper, I think, just to uh, keep that from coming undone. But yeah, it's a nice wearable piece. Uh, you can you could easily layer this up with maybe a nice sheer long sleeve t-shirt on underneath if you wanted to make it that little bit warmer, wear it over tights, um, layer it up with a cardigan on top or perfect for summer days when you just want to wear something really nice and light and floaty. The next thing that I made was the Constance overalls by Fiber Mood. So when I first got this pattern, I was a little bit disappointed to find out that the uh, bib and the straps aren't actually lined, they're just turned over and hemmed. So one of the things that I made sure to do with this pattern was to draft a lining for the bib, which really wasn't that hard, and also line the straps. And I lined them in a gingham fabric, uh, just a, a gingham poly cotton. Uh, the dungarees themselves are made out of a really soft corduroy that I got from Hobbycraft ages ago. And at the time, I think I bought about six meters because I just knew that I could use this for lots of things. It was actually sold as 100% cotton. It's definitely not 100% cotton. It's absolutely a polyester or a poly blend, but it's really soft, really drapey. These dungarees are so comfortable and I live in them basically. Uh, the patch on the front was from Etsy. I just felt like 
they needed something to lift them a little bit so I added the patch it's just hand sewn onto the bib the other thing that I would change about these um, and probably will do in the first sort of quarter of this year is shorten the legs a little bit and add a slightly smaller cuff to the bottom of the legs just to cinch them in a little bit and kind of crop them because at the minute they're a bit of an awkward length and what I find is that while I do turn them up the turn ups just folded up don't stay because the fabric's so soft and doesn't really have any memory with it being polyester um, so I will do that at some point soon because um, I'm getting a little bit fed up of not being able to wear them with boots they look a bit odd so in terms of mods as we discussed I uh, lined the bib I lined the straps I shortened the legs by three inches and also what else did I do that is it so they were shortened and uh, I'm going to shorten them more basically but they're super comfy super roomy they get a lot of wear absolutely love them in fact love them so much that I really want to make myself a second pair of dungarees this year using the Constance pattern moving on to Victorian stuff so I made an announcement in the early part of last year to say that I'd be making lots of Victorian stuff I did make lots of Victorian stuff so some of it um, the project diary vlogs are up on my channel already so you can go and check those out I'm not fully up to date I honestly burned out really badly when it got to be time to make the Victorian uh, ball gown bodice so there's no video for that yet I do have all the raw footage and I'm trying to make some sense of it and get it into uh, <laughs> get it to a place where it seems like you could follow what I'm doing um, so yeah keep an eye out for that one hopefully in the next month or so I'll manage to edit that together and make it make a bit of sense I had a lot of fun putting this all back on again um, so it was kind of nice and cathartic to spend some time today putting it all back on because frankly I got to the point where I didn't even want to look at these clothes again because it was so much of a rush and so much of a time crunch and it was really stressful um, but putting them all back on again has been really fun today. Uh, I had to enlist the help of my 11-year-old uh, to, to help hook me up at the back of the ball gown bodice. Um, so we'll get to that in a minute anyway. The first thing that I made was the Victorian corset. And this was made from a kit that was sent to me from Julia at So Curvy. I don't think Julia's doing kits or fabrics or anything like that anymore um, but you, I think you might still be able to purchase patterns from her. Um, the kit was absolutely great, Julia gave me a lot of help. I already knew the sort of standard construction for a corset and I knew what I was going for but there were just a few slight little niggles that Julia helped me kind of iron out. Uh, which was super helpful, super useful. If you want to have a look at the making of process of the mock-up and the corset, they are up on my channel. I'll be able to pop a card up probably around here somewhere. Um, honestly, the, the corset that I was planning to wear before I made this, didn't realise how badly it fitted until I made this one so i was ever so grateful to julia for sending me that kit free of charge so thank you julia the next thing i made was a petticoat and i had a load of old bed sheets that were um, given to me by my mum and this seemed like the perfect project to use up some of those old bed sheets some of them were a bit worn and, and ripped so i had to work around that there's also a video on the making of the petticoat as well. The petticoat was made using the TV125 pattern by Truly Victorian. I don't think that one petticoat is really enough for my outfit. I probably need two. So I'll be making another one in the future. My aim is to try and make either a silk one or a silk blend one, which is probably more like what the would have had under a ball gown bodice. A ball gown bodice under a ball gown skirt. When I was making the skirts I realised that I couldn't just have the ball gown skirt purely because we were going for brunch the morning after 
the Victorian ball and I knew I would need another outfit to work to lift to wear that was slightly more day wear focused so I made this green walking length skirt using the Laughing Moon 5 Gore skirt pattern. I had to shorten it considerably because I am certainly not the height that they drafted it for. Again, this skirt making of video is available. So if you want to see how this was made, please feel free to go and look at that video at the end. Um, I'll link all the videos that I reference in the description below and also I will add as many cards as YouTube will let me um, but obviously I'd rather you stay and watch this video first so I'll link a few at the end, link some in the descriptions and pop some cards up if you want to go and check these videos out. The nice thing about making this skirt was that it got to be a wearable 12 for the ball gown skirt so I could see how it all fit together and make sure that it fitted. Um, it has a, a deep facing on the outside of black velvet and also the seams at the front are hidden with a bit of uh, black velvet tape which is carried on around the back of the skirt just as a bit of a decorative finish. I needed something to wear with the green walking skirt so I decided I would try and make a black shirt waist with kind of poofy 1890s sleeves. Uh, the first one that I made was not a success. I made it out of a uh, cheap black poly cotton because it was all I could get um, in the time scale that I had. This one was very rushed and I ended up remaking it which is the one that you see here. So for this one I used the black snail shirt waist pattern and I love how it turned out. I used a lightweight black cotton lawn for this because I wanted it to be feel nice and quality and kind of lightweight and not kind of I wanted it to drape nicely which the first one in the poly cotton did not and although it's a joy to wear it and it was a joy to make it it's not such a joy to iron let me tell you because these pleats in the front are actually loose they're not top stitched down so one thing that I would like to do if I ever make this again or maybe I will go back and try and iron the pleats in place and top stitch them down all the way which is what Bradders did with hers and I think it just looks a lot nicer and it keeps the pleats in place and also it stops the uh, the fabric across the front from kind of floofing out of shape so I think that's something that I need to do um, and I would definitely do it on the next one so there's a tip the big puff sleeves are kept in place with an underlayer of cotton organdy so it's actually got a short sleeve underneath that you can't see made in exactly the same way um, but made with stiff cotton organdy and the nice thing about cotton organdy is that it's papery and stiff but when it gets wet it doesn't actually lose any of that stiffness it's part of the fibers and how they're treated when the fabric is uh, after the fabric is woven so i feel like organdy is one of the best kept secrets ever in terms of keeping body and volume in clothes um, so if i am to make another one of these i'll definitely repeat that as well i did also make a little bow tie to go with this ensemble and I can't find it anywhere, I think I've lost it. It'll be in the house somewhere, I just, I'm not quite sure where, so I need to find it. Uh, it would have been nice to show you how it all looks together, because it is actually really cute. I need to add a little bit of wire into the bow tie somehow, because it keeps kind of flipping down. So when you look at me face on, you can't really see it very well, so I need to do that. Um, but yeah, really love this ensemble, it's such a great look. I wore it to Beamish as well when Bradders and I went for the day out. Um, yeah, highly recommend that black snail pattern. Moving on to the ball gown itself that was made for the ball in April. This was the prior attire Victorian ball that happens in Bath every year. Uh, I believe it's happening this year in April. Again, I will not be going this year just because it doesn't really feel like my era and also maybe I kind of feel like once every other year might be enough for me um, in terms of 
the stress of making things. It was a great time. It was a, a really nice evening. Um, had a lot of fun dancing. I'd never done any Victorian dancing before, so that was quite an experience and uh, lots of fun. Some very knowledgeable people there who kind of kept me on the straight and narrow with uh, regards to the steps. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll go not this year, but the year after, we'll see. So the ball gown skirt was made from the same Laughing Moon pattern as the walking skirt, but this one I made in the short train length. And to make sure that it wasn't gonna get in the way when I was dancing and whatnot, I added, I added a, a fabric covered hook and eye, one to the side seam and one to the center back seam so that it could be hooked up and uh, kept out of the way while we were dancing, which in hindsight, was a great move because even if it's not entirely historically accurate it really you know that skirt had to be out of the way there was so much swishing so much walking around and jumping and stuff during the dancing that either someone would have ripped it off me or I would have ripped it off myself and I'm sure I did see someone have a bit of a skirt malfunction be during the dancing so I was really glad that I added that. Again, the skirt's fully lined in black organdy just to keep it in shape. And the main fabric that I used was a, like a navy midnight blue poly velvet. Now, the reason I didn't go for a silk velvet, I do discuss in the skirt making video, so you can go and check that out. But very briefly, I just didn't feel like I could justify silk velvet. It's very likely that I might only wear this skirt once every couple of years at the most and even if I was to make it and resell it I don't think that I'll find many people that match my proportions in terms of my waist size and my height uh, it's unlikely I'll find anyone five foot two or below needing a skirt for a Victorian ball so with that in mind I didn't really want to pay the 30 pounds plus a meter for silk velvet um, I've got kids to feed and family things to pay for and my costuming fun can't really uh, swallow up my entire budget. So poly velvet it was. And honestly, I think it looked great. Uh, I'm not sure whether people in the room on the day could tell that it was not the finest of silk velvets. Possibly, I guess. Uh, but, you know, I think it looks stunning. So I was happy with it. Moving on to the ball gown bodice. I made this this was rushed I mean I, I still feel like I mean it's a great piece of sewing that I'm mega proud of but when I think back to the the process of making it honestly I feel like I've repressed a lot of those memories because I don't really remember it at all and I watched back some of the raw footage that I took when I was making the bodice and I was like whoa is that actually how it went together? Because I barely remember any of this and barely remember any of the process of engineering it. So I used a truly Victorian ball gown bodice pattern as the base pattern and then using my inspiration photo, which is a ball gown that is in the Met New York Museum collection, I kind of reverse engineered it to look similar. And so it's this kind of asymmetric velvet sort of draped bodice with a lace portion underneath as well. And on one side, there's a cap sleeve with some velvet bands going over the sleeve. And on the other side, it was really difficult to tell from the photo what was going on because there's a big kind of corsage thing on the, sh on the shoulder. And I couldn't tell whether it has a strap behind it. So I made it kind of asymmetric and strapless. And then when we got to um, Bath, Bradders was a little bit like, mm, I think there probably would have been a skinny strap under that. And maybe it's looking a bit anachronistic without a strap. So I did, in a bit of a rush, add this kind of um, ribbon, ruched ribbon strap on, which does the job, but really was a bit of a, a last minute hack. And I would like to revisit it and go back and make something that looks a bit nicer and, and is attached a bit better. This is literally just tacked on with hand stitches. So the bodice closes in the back with hooks and eyes and poppers. 
if I was to go back and make it again, it might be more convenient to put a, a closing in the centre front and add that wrap portion over the top with hooks and eyes. I think the reason I didn't go for that in the first place was because actually the neckline looks quite uninterrupted in terms of all the lace. So I figured it probably did have a back closing, which is fine when you've got someone to dress you. But when you're on your own trying to get into uh, something like a back closing hook and eye bodice, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, probably even a lacing back might have been a better idea. But it's done now and it looks good. Uh, but yeah, that's something to consider for the future if I make another ball gown bodice for another ball. So overall, I was absolutely stoked with the way that this turned out. Moving on to non-Victorian stuff, in the second half of the year, uh, we took a little trip to Centre Parks and something that I really wanted to make was a nice kind of floaty and light skirt. Uh, I knew we were going to be there on the hottest day of the year and it got really hot last year. So I made this tiger uh, print skirt out of some viscose uh, chalet that was sent to me free of charge by Abakan Fabrics, part of their own range of prints. Really lovely to work with. The pattern that I used is the paper cut axis dress uh, and it's heavily hacked. So the original skirt has a back slit, a centre front seam and a centre back seam as well as side seams. I wanted to eliminate those centre front seams completely and have two princess seams down the uh, front instead, just so that it would give me the option to have a slit um, sort of offset from the front. So the whole thing is fully French seamed and even the slits are kind of a continuation of the French seam, which is a new technique that I'd never done before and it was a cool one to learn. Looks really neat inside, probably the neatest slit that I've ever sewn ever so yeah was proud of that one and um, the skirt itself is great it's really comfortable there's elastic waistband partial elastic waistband at the back which just gives a little bit of wearing ease and also a side zipper uh, which is an invisible zip and does look invisible so yeah i was pleased with this one i felt like i used all the techniques that i didn't quite nail when i was on the sewing bee so it was nice to be able to take my time and make something that felt really well finished, even if it's not like the most statement piece you've ever seen. The other thing that's nice about it is it can be dressed up and it can be dressed down. So I wore this on my holiday with my chunky Dr. Martin sandals, but it'd look equally as amazing on a night out with some high heels as well, I think. The next project that I did was this pastel goth dungarees. I had this fabric sent to me by So Anonymous and I feel really bad that I didn't get around to making something sooner because by the time I did get around to making these I realised that this fabric has already gone out of stock and I think it's Hannah at So Anonymous actually isn't really stocking many fabrics at all now. She seems to be focusing a lot on labels. So go and check her out. Her range of labels is absolutely gorgeous. But I did actually, you know, manage to get around to making something eventually. Really bad, sorry. But anyway, I made these Collins overalls by Our Lady of Leisure. I think that the pattern itself leaves a little bit to be desired uh, in terms of instructions. The fit is fine and the finishing inside was a little bit iffy, I thought. I made the entire bodice fully lined and I don't think that that's something that the original pattern tells you to do. Oh, sorry, it is fully lined, but the way that it's finished inside is a little bit odd. Um, so the seam allowance around the zipper was just going to end up looking a little bit weird and unfinished. So I just tweaked how I... Um, I hand stitched the lining down to the zipper I think instead of finishing the lining and the uh, main fabric together with the overlocker and then adding the zipper on top which is what the pattern tells you to do. I kind of sandwiched the zip between the lining and, and, the, and the fabric which just gives a cleaner look inside. Uh, what mods did I make? 
let me check. So I shot the leg. I can't remember by how much, but probably significantly because usually patterns are drafted for like five foot eight people and I'm really not that tall, five foot two at stretch. Uh, I also finished the legs with a turn up because uh, I just like the way that it looks. I think it looks a bit more finished on these kind of tapered leg patterns. And I do like the fit of the dungarees. I did have to take the center back in and I had to increase the width of the darts. In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that because then now maybe just on the snug side. I should have just done one or the other, I think, and crept up on it that way. But they do still look great. The rainbow zip that's in the front of them is from BST Fabrics and they actually do that zip in quite a big range of lengths, which is absolutely great. It's so frustrating when you can find like a nice zip and you can only find it in like a 12 inch length. So moving on, I made this hooded, no, it's not hooded. It's like a funnel neck sweater dress, sweatshirt dress. And the pattern is the Jolly Nathalie sweatshirt dress. It's a funnel neck. Um, the one mod that I made was to straighten out the waist area. So rather than having a dip in and a bit of shaping at the waist, I just continued the line all the way down from the bust to the hip because I didn't want lots of shaping. I wanted it to look purposefully baggy and oversized and comfy. The fabric is a fur-lined sweatshirting from Minerva, which was sent to me free of charge as part of my ambassadorship with them. So uh, yeah, it's really comfy. The sweatshirting itself has a stretch in all directions, super comfy. Uh, it's been through the wash several times so far. I sadly got a big grease stain on it on Christmas Day when I was making <laughs> roasties, I think. Um, so I've been trying to eliminate that of, by washing it and putting uh, fairy liquid on it and stuff. It hasn't faded. Well, it has faded the oil stain. It hasn't faded the fabric. So it's been treated a bit harshly with uh, vanish spray, oxy spray and uh, fairy liquid and it looks none the worse for wear. So the the design on the front, I bought the design file from Etsy and printed that out on my Cricut Air 3, which you might be able to see behind me peeking through. And I used Sizer Easy Weed Matte Vinyl in black. And it's a really easy process. You can just pop the vinyl on whack a teflon sheet over the top of it and as long as you've got a hard enough surface you should be able to quite easily apply it just using an iron any old iron without the steam setting um and it's really great i mean it goes through the wash fine looks great black on black always a good look the very last project that i managed to squeeze in this year was the deer and doe orage dress so this is a new pattern from Deer and Doe. I'm not, I think orage might mean storm. I'm not sure in French. And uh, it's a lovely pattern. It's got this kind of overlaid yoke, which gives you a little keyhole effect in the front. It's made for stretch fabrics. The shaping of it is just gorgeous. Like the skirt has kind of a... a, a, a the skirt has kind of a rise and fall hem, so it's longer at the at the centre front than it is at the sides, and it's a circle skirt as well, so it looks really nice and full. The one thing that I don't like is the seam line around the waist. It just looks a bit naff for me, I think. Um, it needs covering with some things, which is why I wear it with a belt. Uh, it would have been nice probably um, impractical to have it as like maybe a princess seamed version which wouldn't need that uh waist seam i guess but yeah it's an it's a really nice pattern i would make it again um and probably figure out a way to disguise the waist seam a little bit better 
and it was made out of a four-way stretch crushed velvet which wasn't as disgusting to work with as I thought it was going to be. It actually ended up being a really straightforward project and it was my dress for my works night out at Christmas and I also wore it on New Year's Eve so it got a couple of outings over Christmas and was very comfortable to wear actually. One thing that I said I was going to try and get to in December that I didn't quite manage was the Disturbia dupe dress. Uh, I probably will still make it because I did buy the velvet for it um, but I don't know when and uh, yeah that'll go on the back burner now in favour of new workload because I started a new job on January the 1st, no January the 3rd and it's only when you get pushed out of your comfort zone, I think, and realise that you need to start dressing to impress a little bit more, that you realise that actually you got stuck in a rut wearing the same three outfits, especially because I was only in the office like one day a week, so I could uh, get away with not having that many outfits and just rotate them. But now I'm back in the office a bit more, I really need to up my game with regards to what I'm wearing. So the first project of this year will be a new pair of workwear trousers. Um, but I don't want to go into too many details about my plans for 2023. Um, I will try and do a separate plans for January and February video a little bit later, um, maybe next week. And we can talk about it then. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions at all about anything that I made this year, please do feel free to comment below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you tend to watch many of my videos, it would mean the world to me if you subscribe. Uh, it just makes me feel a little bit better to see that counter going up. I know <laughs> that's really kind of lame, but everyone likes to feel like they're talking to someone and not talking into the ether. So thank you for those of you who do take the time to like the video and comment um, and interact. It's really lovely uh, to speak to you all. Anyway, that's enough rambling from me. I hope you've had a great first week of 2023 and I will see you again next time. Bye.